We kind of mentioned this last week about um, our evangelistic ministry. And that, I don't know, we put it off and put it off and uh, hope you have the best timing. And of course, most of us are not here, but that's okay. Because uh, we're going to put it up on our website and uh, hopefully those that are not present today can go in there and see um, the things that I, I believe the Spirit is compelling us to do here at L Street. And um, as Jesus told his disciples, let's see if I do this right, with fervent desire about sharing the Passover meal with them in Luke 22 and 15, I also with fervent desire have been waiting and wanting to share this announcement with all of you. Uh, today, as I mentioned last week, we officially launched our church's evangelistic ministry. And you all heard right, our churches, um, as in all of us. So uh, before you get nervous and start uh, turning your head, no, no, <laughs> just hear me out. Your normal daily routine is not going to change. You're just going to add something to it. Very simple. I'm not asking that we all go out to a corner somewhere and start preaching the gospel. Only people that are given the gift of evangelism by Jesus, uh, noted in Ephesians 4 and 11, are compelled by the, by the Holy Spirit to go out and do so, so don't panic, all right? But we are all commanded by Jesus to do something with his gospel. Amen? Yeah. All right. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore. And this is a command by our Lord. And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus commanded this because the controlling purpose of a local church is to make disciples of all kinds of people. Those who are evangelized are converted, then they should be baptized, attesting to their identification with Christ and with the local body of believers. The final phase of the Great Commission is to train disciples in Christian knowledge and for effective service. A church cannot choose one aspect of its responsibilities and neglect the others. The Great Commission is a simple command with three steps. Evangelism, baptism, and education. We have the baptism pool behind me. We have Bible studies Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. Where we can all be discipled by the Word of God. That's why it's so important for all of us to catch a Bible study. Evangelism is the only part we need to work on in order to grow this church, the biblical way together. The Great Commission is the strategy by which the first century church in Acts chapter two saturated its community with the gospel in which about 3000 souls were added. When a, truth, when a church moves together in faith, you'll be amazed at what the Lord will do. The Bible says that he added daily those who were being saved. I'm sure most of you notice a box of red Bibles and our official ch church gospel tracts in the table in the back of the auditorium. From now on, we're going to do our best to keep that stocked. And this is how we're going to saturate our community together. For the Bibles, I simply ask that everyone take one and keep it in your car. There's been several times when Dave and I have been out evangelizing and someone asks us for a Bible. And it breaks my heart and it makes me bite down on my teeth because we didn't have one to give them. We miss that opportunity. What better gift can we give someone than the entire Word of God? Amen? Amen? That problem's not solved. 
By having one available, we will never miss that opportunity again. We can give it to a friend, a stranger, a guest, anyone. Like this. Or like this. Or like this. Or like this. And if you give yours away, make sure we stock it with another one. We don't have to miss that opportunity again. That's it for the Bibles. It's very easy. Just take one, keep it in your car, have it readily available so that when the opportunity comes up, you have one there to give to someone. For the gospel church tracts, Take a few and put them in the center console of your car. Have them there in your sight so that when you're out and about, you can remember you have them with you. In the front, there's scripture that backs up the fact that only Jesus saves. Okay? Uh, we put on there John 6 and 47. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Uh, John 14 and 6, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 17 and 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And Acts 4 and 12, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the logo that the Holy Spirit compelled me to promote. Because through Isaiah, the Lord said, I, even I, am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. And in the back and short is the gospel message, our church address, service time, and our website. And this is a message which we preach. Sin is the wrong thing we do and ha or have done. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3 and 23. Our sin separates us from God from eternity. But your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you, said he will not hear. And Jesus died and rose again so that no one has to go to hell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And repent, turn away from sin, receive Jesus as Lord, and be saved. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, you will be saved. Romans 10 and 9. The church address or service time and our webpage. This is basically what Jesus was saying when he came to Galilee preaching, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. This is a message we are to announce. And this is how we're gonna saturate our community with this gospel. I'm sure most of us go to an ATM machine. Every time I go to an ATM machine, I'll put my card in to do my business, I put a couple of tracks there on the bottom. It's very easy. There are different types. Some of them have a pretty steep angle. If your card is bended up, it kind of tends to slide off. So I bend it so that the edges are touching, you set it on there and they stay on there pretty easy. Okay? It's very easy to do. And some of them have a little groove in the middle where you can actually stand them up on there like this one. Uh, which is pretty easy. There's one at a drive-thru. When you're going through a drive-thru, put one on there, a couple on there. Here's another one. It's very easy to do. And it's something we all do at one time or another. Okay? I'm sure most of us go to a gas station. Right? So we got to get gas for our vehicles. 
Every time I go to a gas station, I'll put some in the gas pump. Sometimes there's a sign above it where you can conveniently place it in there like this one. Sometimes I'll put it in the front. There's some grooves in there somewhere where you can wedge a card into where it stays in there pretty good. Or even set them on the side like that. Very easy. It's something we do at least once a week. I'm sure most of us go out to eat, right? Every time you go out to eat, when you're done, pay your bill, you're getting ready to leave your table, drop one in the card. This one's at a table at Los Panchos, okay? Very easy. Set one there. This one's at uh, Panda Express. One day I ate there, I got done, went out to throw my trash, left one on the card, right there on the table. Very easy to do, okay? Always keep one in your wallet or in your purse. You never know when you're going to have a conversation with someone and church comes up. If you have a track readily available, you can give it to them. The address, the service time is in the back. Again, don't miss the opportunity. There's plenty of times when people ask me, what church you go to? You know, before it was like, oh, I go to church on L Street and I forget the address. Well, it's between uh, third and fourth and right next to the Chula Vista High School. You know, but once they go on their way, you know they're going to forget that, right? If you have a card ready, you can give it to them. The address is in the back. And hopefully, um, what we're hoping for is that they'll be convicted enough by the Spirit to come here and hear the Word of God. Whenever I'm out, there's always an opportunity to drop a card somewhere, right? When I go bond shop and return the card, leave one there. Someone's going to grab that basket. They might see it and grab it. You never know. This is at Home Depot. I'll go shopping there, I'll buy something, I'll drop a card somewhere where someone can see it, right? Someone will grab it. This is at a public bathroom. Sometimes we'll use a public bathroom. When I'm in there, I'll do my thing, wash up, I'll leave one there. You know someone's gonna go in there. And if you get a little bold, when you go through a drive-through, you can give one to some person like this. It surprises them, believe me. <laughs> they never expect it. I give them one, I pay my bill, get my stuff, and I go, here you go. And they'll go, what's this? <laughs> I go, very easy. I'll tell them, that's the grace of God for you. Or you tell them, God bless you, and you drive away. You're not going to have a conversation with a person about the gospel in a drive through You're in a drive through There's cars behind you, right? Well, you're hoping is they'll just take it, put it in their pocket. When they get out of work, maybe they'll go home and load their pocket and they'll change it, they see it. And they'll take a minute to read it and reflect on what it actually says. And we hope that the Holy Spirit is going to do the miracle there. That's all we're hoping, right? Very easy. Church, not only is it the duty of every Christian to get the gospel out, but greater than that, it is a command by our Lord Jesus to do so. Remember what Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What the Lord has said before us this day is very easy. It's not too restrictive or tight on us that we can't wear it. And if we're yoked with the one who gives sufficient grace, he will help us bear it. In fact, if you can get out of bed and get out of your house, you can do this. James said, we have to be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. I also want us to understand one thing. There are few people in the Bible that came to the faith at their first calling. The disciples, the woman at the well, Zacchaeus, there were more. But in relation to all the people in the faith to this day, there's not many. Most people come to the faith after an accumulation of seeds that are planted and take root in the hearts of people, which causes them to open it just enough for the Holy Spirit to enter, cause a deep conviction, and lead them to repentance where he does the miracle. Some Christians are called to preach gospel for many years without seeing much fruit. Others step in at the end of those years, and many souls turn to the Lord. This is what Jesus said to his disciples in John 4 and 38. 
I sent you to harvest what you did not plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. Very few souls are ever saved by the ministry of a single person. Most people have heard the gospel many times before they ever accept Jesus as Savior. Therefore, the one who finally leads a person to Christ should not exalt themselves as if they were the only instrument God uses in this marvelous work. So when it happens, remain humble. But also, never underestimate the power of God's word or a planted seed. And never become discouraged or think that your work is done in vain. You never know if you're gonna be the final person God uses to lead someone to Christ in this church or somewhere else. Last thing, I want to share this email with all of you, which I save in my computer to remind me of this from Clarence Ball. I'm sure there's a few of us still here that remember Clarence Ball. He was an elder here back when Kirk Catt was a pastor and before Matt Rains came here. I think he stayed a year or two after that. On Friday, June the 4th, 2010, about two years after I became a Christian here in this church, Clarence sent me this email. It said, Ignacio, we had a baptism on Wednesday night. It was a young lady who had read one of your tracks. Keep up the good work and may God continue to bless you and your family. I'm not telling you this to boast. This was about two years after I became a Christian here, 15 years ago when I felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to go out and preach the gospel. I didn't know much about the Bible, but I knew he was leading me. So I typed out a little track, and for years I made a commitment to pass out 100 tracks at the trolley stations every Friday from San Isidro to National City. God taught me right away to never underestimate the power of his word or of a planted seed, because it is he who gives the increase. The amazing thing about this email is that I never gave it to this young lady. I gave it to another person who left it on a bench. She sat down, picked it up, read it. The Holy Spirit convicted her, and that next Wednesday she came here and got baptized. It is the Holy Spirit who does the work. So never underestimate the power of a planted seed. You never know where that person is in their journey of life before they read it. There is a great work of ingathering that the Lord has laid before us. And we should give ourselves to do it diligently because Jesus is still telling all his churches today, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Church, this is part of our identity being in Christ Jesus. This is not part of our DNA, not just something we're supposed to do. This should become second nature to us. This is our new way of life, being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let's be the church that carries out the commandment of our Lord and saturate our community with the gospel. Make it a commitment today and for the rest of our lives to always put out a couple of tracks each week as we go about our daily lives. It's very easy to do. And if this causes you a little anxiety or dismay, remember what God said to Joshua before he commanded him to go over the Jordan and take the land which God promised the children of Israel. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Take your Bible, take your tracks, and let's build this church together the biblical way. Amen?